to move on to our volunteer spotlight. Uh, I mentioned we're going to hear about the hackathon and some remote implementation from two of our volunteers, Pat Coyle and Phil Bowman from our San Francisco Professionals chapter. I tried to summarize their um, experience and titles onto the screen, but if you might have seen in the Zoom chat, um, they could go on for, for a while. These guys are, um, are some of our best uh, volunteers and are just leading the charge with, um, with their efforts. So, Well, hello everyone. I, I'm just delighted to be here and uh, I just want to take a moment before I tear into this talk. I'll point out one key thing. You'll notice this is the San Francisco Professionals and UC Berkeley project. It's a joint project. We're the we're the chapter of record, but we consciously from the get-go launched with with those students from the UC Berkeley team. And and in terms of engagement and corporate partners, I think uh, you know I'd noticed in the participant list that uh, uh, that Christopher Fallen was was listed in the call there as his colleague said he was sitting in for him. But I remember a few years ago at one EWB conference, him speaking so eloquently about the importance uh, for any firms and construction firms uh, to tap into EWB volunteers and use it as a discriminating factor to, to find well-qualified candidates and then to support them in their EWB uh, trajectory and future career. So I think that's just great. And I, I, it resonates with me with engagement. Uh, you look at Phil and I, and we're retirees, but we, we just love it when we see these young uh, students picking up on EWB early on in their careers, as we have with our experience with the UC Berkeley chapter. Um, the other thing I wanted to call out in corporate sponsors, you know, we talked about uh, Stantec, and one of uh, last year's cohorts of students actually got us a grant from Stantec through the employee program. So thank you uh, for that. So with that, let's go to the next slide. So just in terms of this project in the central highlands of Nicaragua, El Lanito is a community of about 300 people, 300 homes, 1,100 people. And the water supply is primarily a 100-foot well with a hand pump. And some people walk a mile or more up and down hills to get their daily water. They've had the well since 2002, but have been waiting 20 years for a water distribution system. Next slide. And this is basically the situation. I mean, other people haul water too, but a lot of it falls on the back of uh, young women, girls. Uh, people spend an inordinate amount of time. Uh, you, you know, on the right there, you can see uh, women with five gallon pails of water on their heads. That's 40, that's 40 pounds of, uh, of weight on your head. And some of those people are walking, as I say, up to a mile. Next slide. So we, we were able to actually travel. We got a window uh, after having done an assessment trip in 2016, we were able to, and, and having the civil unrest in Nicaragua have a, 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 you know, a, a travel suspension for quite a long time. We, we were able to travel in, in, and were there in early uh, 2020 for the, uh, the first part of January. And we had two teams that overlapped by a couple days uh, to, to do what we called our early implementation, which was to get the, uh, the well support building, uh, which is uh, called the pump house here, uh, prepared and to start the pipeline. And the main thing we did is we, we got community members trained on the pipeline installation and cemented great relationships with all the partners and basically developed first articles of every item that was important to be built so that we we got most of those started and demonstrated before we left and then the implementation continued with remote implementation uh, uh, happening in our absence you know we we left in january and by early march we're all shut down in a global pandemic uh, but uh, during that interim, with care and with due caution, uh, the community finished four kilometers of pipeline, 50 tap stands, a couple pressure brake tanks, uh, some river crossings, initial electrical installation, and so forth. And we had a lead uh, foreman in uh, Nicaragua, they would call him uh, Mason, uh, and weekly visits from our Nicaragua country office engineer, Evelyn, was able to do that for us. And she was on site for all the critical work, like the electrical installation and the pump house. And, and Phil really carried the water for us. He, as our, our responsible engineer in chief, uh, dealt with weekly, sometimes daily communication via WhatsApp and Google Translate to resolve issues, approve material purchase, and so forth. Next slide. 
this will just we'll go through these fairly quickly they just highlight the work that continued after our absence you can see on the left we uh, see all across these slides that we we were anxious about how difficult it would be to trench in this terrain but we were pleasantly surprised actually by the time we left on january 18th 90 percent of this pipeline trench had been excavated but you can see in the far left some of the installation areas were pretty rocky uh, and we'd had our doubts as to how difficult that would be. Next slide. Here are a number of those installations uh, from pressure brake tanks to a tap stand with its associated uh, meter in a valve box. Um, and so there'll be 50 of these throughout the community. So people are still gonna be hauling water, but they'll be hauling at much shorter distances than in the current scenario. Next slide. More tap stands. And uh, the multiple uh, uh, tubes in the, in, the, uh, in the one trench there were on their way up the hill towards uh, where our storage tanks located, but that's fine, we'll go on to the next slide. That was just a fairly busy chunk of trench. And so, you know, we're, we're basically almost done. We, we're approved for uh, the completion implementation, which we're projecting now through September. Um, we'll, we'll do that using remote implementation, continuing just as we have uh, since we left in January. And we'll coordinate with the country office to issue the pump installation contract and, and get the, the power connection from the utility uh, to the well support building install our storage tanks and chlorinator test and commission the system and resolve problems. And we'll continue to use WhatsApp conference calls and, and video inspections of the work. Um, and the country engineering, country office engineer will be on site for critical work. As we hand off, what I would just like to emphasize were that in, as, as uh, Jackie mentioned in her remarks, the, the strategy of going to focus engineers without borders icp work in community in countries with country offices has been extraordinarily beneficial for us you know the nicaraguan country office is a very capable team and they're really a pleasure to work with we've also tapped uh, steve crow uh, in the guatemala country office for advice uh, on for example we're looking at ferro cement tanks and he he was very helpful in that regard um, we, we uh, were very fortunate to have uh, both the country office uh, capabilities as well as having a, an amazing level of commitment, engagement, and capacity in our El Lanito community. Um, our NGO partners in Alcanza, Nicaragua are first class community facilitators. They live in and around the community and we've worked closely with them throughout the, the inception of this project. And I, I would stress um, you know, we, we, we had to clip a few things out here, but we had five young women from Berkeley travel on these travel teams. And so for me, that's really heartwarming to see these young people coming, being exposed to what community development work is about. Uh, in the case of one of the cohort from last year, actually having a corporate relationship grant come to our project, just huge. So I really think that the opportunities for engagement uh, across the board with these corporate partners and and the ability to bring young people into the organization. And in this very difficult time, you know, this is, um, my, my wife has joked, I'm a little COVID crazy here. It's, it's wonderful to see ways that even when sheltering in place, we can have an impact and make a difference with our partners. So thanks much for the opportunity to share this. Pat, that was fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing all of that. And I think you really hit uh, for me on, on something so important, which is that uh, even in this time, the work can continue on. Um, you guys are going to see this project through, through uh, all the way to fruition. And I think that's just so fantastic and says so much about the commitment of not only EWB, but of our volunteers to really push that forward.